Greetings. It's been a crazy few weeks for me. Grad school has been keeping me on a tight leash with a boatload of work. But luckily, I've been given some reading room to make some more videos. This one goes out to insert deep username of Reddit asking, quote, How do you toe rip? Is it necessary to learn how to do stops on both sides? How do you gain confidence when blading around cars? End quote. And then at the very end, I'll talk about tutorials and instructional, instructional videos that everyone has been asking for. So following the same format, somewhat five minute video, starting with a quick answer of the question followed by uh, a more detailed explanation. So quick answer, uh, shift your weight onto your front wheel when doing the final push of your stride. Number two, it is not necessary to learn how to stop on both sides, though it is advantageous. Confidence uh, skating around cars is obtained through my understanding of the rules of the road, experience, and my understanding of what it's like to be a driver following or passing a skater or cyclist on the road. So my first question was, what is toe ripping? As defined by, insert deep username, it is, quote, I've heard a few people call it toe flick as well, and I see you do it. I think it's a method of flicking your toe out behind at the end of your stride to gain speed, but I haven't been able to find out how to do it. So let's talk about the stride. Uh, though running and skating are vastly different, there is one mechanic of producing force that they have in common. If I were to take a stick and wave it in the air, I would never be able to break the sound barrier. With a whip, on the other hand, I would be able to do so because it acts as a wave that increases the frequency as it approaches the end. Your foot can do the same thing by, quote, toe ripping or flicking, or I would call it plantar flexing, which is the act of pointing your foot down. This is done when running and walking at the end of the stride. The heel comes off the ground, followed by the balls of the toes. Uh, not to get too nitty gritty on gait patterns, but yes, for those that are familiar with gait patterns, I acknowledge that running does not always consist of heel contact. Anyways, strides when skating can follow a similar pattern where the front wheel leaves the ground last, much like the balls of the toes. As a disclaimer, this can only be done under two circumstances. One, you have short frames. If you have long frames, then it is very difficult to get onto the front wheel for that final push. And number two, soft boots or a low to mid cuff is needed. Hard boots with a hard cut with a high cuff don't allow for much flexibility of the ankle. So for the most part, the hard shell locks the ankle the angle of the ankle, making it difficult, but not impossible. The only way around a hard boot or a boot that restricts ankle movement is to keep the skates looser instead of tying or buckling them snugly. I don't recommend this because it can be dangerous, but I admit that I keep my boots a little loose to allow me to do this. So how is it done? During my strides, I emphasize pushing through my heels to utilize my glutes and my hamstrings, and there's only so far I can push my heel down and back on the ground beneath me until I need to pull my leg back up for the next stride. Toward the end of the stride, I eventually reach a point in which I can apply the most amount of force into the ground to push me forward. Once I've pushed my heels out to the maximum range of motion, I shift, my ap shift the application of my force from my heel, which puts the weight on my back wheel, to the ball of my big toe, which puts the weight onto my front wheel. Using this front wheel as the ball of my big toe increases the length of my stride. This means that I am increasing the range of motion that I am able to produce force. So rather than being restricted to only being able to produce force from the hip to my heel, I include the ankle joint to perform plantar flexion, which is the toe ripping or flicking that gives an extra oomph to my stride. Much like the normal walking gait pattern, it begins with heel strike, followed by a phase called foot flat, in which the foot flattens out, and then it's followed by heel off, which describes a shift of the weight onto the balls of the foot as the heel leaves the ground. As we skaters all know, we can't skate heel to toe like we're walking because we're on wheels. We wouldn't go anywhere. But by using this concept to add a little bit more of a push to the stride, we can accomplish a subtle increase in speed by utilizing the entire length of our body. When producing this part of the stride, plantar flexion, 
to the end range of motion is not necessary. Only a small range of motion is needed in order to shift the weight, uh, shift my weight through my wheels and flick my toe at the end. So briefly, because I am short on time, it is five minutes now, uh, confidence when skating on the road, uh, just know the rules, you know, that's easy. You know, stay in the bike lane and keep strides away from traffic. Imagine what it's like to be a driver um, that is behind you or wants to pass you. Drivers feel more confident when they see my strides are consistent and that they do not cross over the bike lane and into traffic. A driver's confidence in my competence as a skater will produce less anxiety for them, offering a bit of trust that I will not put them in danger or do some abrupt swerve when passing. Lastly, experience. Being able to skate on the road is like the first time driving a car. There are so many things to look at and things to look out for, signs, people, potholes, lines, you know, but after a while, it's all just second nature. You'll get it. So quickly, we're at six minutes now. Let's talk about tutorials. First, there are so many resources out there and video tutorials that are, you know, they just make it really hard for me to justify making one due to the amount of time it takes. And it's not just time itself. It will take an abnormally large amount of time, but it's because there are so many tutorials already in existence. And for this reason, I have to watch them all and find out what they're missing and then compare that to what I have to offer as content that will make it worthwhile for viewers to click on and watch. So far, you have all been very supportive by asking questions and commenting and have expressed a lot of interest in tutorial style videos. Because of that, I have a lot of ideas and a general sense of direction. I'm doing all this for you. So if you want a tutorial, please comment and tell me exactly what the existing tutorials are missing that would help fill the gaps in your understanding of a specific skill that perhaps I can explain better or that I can add to to help fill those gaps. So again, thanks for watching and it is good to be on a break. Insert deep username of Reddit. I hope this answered your question. If you have a question that you would like answered, please drop a comment and I will do my worst.